Revelations chapter 13 begins with a beast, which is the Antichrist, raising up out of the sea, which represents the nations of the world. The beast is the Antichrist or the false Messiah. He will be the final world ruler, also known as the little horn in the book of Daniel. And in the book of Daniel, there's so much about this, it's almost a parallel to the book of Revelation. And I've told you this, that about two-thirds of the book of Revelation can be found in the Old Testament, mainly in the book of Daniel. Things during the end times will be chaotic. Say, chaotic. After Christ removes the church, there's going to be chaos on earth. People will be looking for a solution. A time of confusion and uncertainty will cause the people to desperately look for a strong leader that could come and bring hope and security in a time of fear and apprehension. People will desperately seek a strong, charismatic, authoritative leader who can pull the world back from the very brink of disaster. Those people will get their wish as a powerful, charismatic leader, okay, spouting peace and unity will come on the scene. Did you hear what your pastor said? It will come on the scene. But he will turn out to be much more than what they bargained for. He will be the dictator whose cruelty will be more than any other the world has ever known. This man will be the Antichrist as he will rule the entire world and receive worship from humans. As we read now in Revelations chapter 13, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw the beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon these horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Don't think of the beast in this incredible vision as weird. Don't think of it that way. It's not a weird creature. What what John saw was a description of his character. What he saw was a description of who he was and what he stands for. And he wrote it down with the way that God told him to write it down, but he did not see a beast with seven heads. You hear what I'm saying? Those heads meant something, and this is very important to understand this. So don't think of, I see artist's conception of these wild-looking beasts coming out of the sea and out of the earth. That's not what John saw. Amen. Think of it as a, as a description of his character and what he stands for. Both Daniel and John also saw political systems and leaders that they describe using the term beast. And John sees this beast coming up out of the sea. This beast is a Gentile leader of a Gentile system. John didn't call it a beast because he was a Gentile. He called it a beast because it came up out of the sea of nations. The sea that John saw was a large group of people was a large group of people. In Daniel chapter 7, the prophet records a dream that he had in which he saw the rise and fall of four Gentile world empires. Each was so characterized as a beast coming from the sea of nations. Remember, Daniel saw this nearly 600 years before Christ. Now, one thing that you need to know right up front that Satan is a counterfeiter, amen? Satan is not a creator, only God creates, amen. Satan is a created being that counterfeits. Say counterfeits, amen. Okay, this is so important to understand this, okay. He has an unholy trinity that consists of himself, Satan, the Antichrist, which is the political and religious beast, and the false prophet, which is also a religious and political beast. 
The sea here represents the Gentile nations of the world. John did not see a body of water. He saw a body of people from which the beast comes. The beast is the Antichrist, the false messiah. He is also called the final Gentile world ruler. He is called the little horn in Daniel. He is called the willful king. He is called the coming prince and the man of sin in Paul's revelation in 2 Thessalonians. The sea means large numbers of people. This beast has to do with the powers of this earth and anything that is opposed to Christianity. Amen. Remember, he is an anti-Christ. These heads show dominion. Say dominion. The horns show power. Amen. We know that this has something to do with the world government. Say world government. And rulers of that crown show dominion. Amen. And blasphemy denies the true God. It doesn't matter who the eye was and what John was saying. It was probably him. It is not difficult to understand where their power comes from. The personification of evil is when it takes over governments and the people uh, who are the heads of those governments. Amen. Yes. Are you seeing something like that shape in the world today? Yes. The second verse, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet was like a bear and the mouth was like a lion. He had these visions of animals, and, and there was a reason for that, okay? This is really important, okay? It represented the past empires, the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, and the Empire of Greece, amen. The description of the beast connects it closely to the dragon. Who is the dragon in Scripture? It is Satan himself, amen. As the first scripture indicated, a beast with seven heads. The other two earlier empires was Syria and Egypt. So to make the next scripture easy to understand, I will name the six empires. They are Syria, Egypt, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. The beast represented past empires, and these are the six empires of the past. Just to review, the sixth one is Rome. Amen. In the time of Christ, the Roman Empire was at large. Now, the, the, there is more meaning I want to get into, but the Holy Spirit is, is leading me on here because of time factors. But I do believe the Lord wants us to understand this. There was an assassination attempt against the beast, and that's recorded in Scripture. The third verse says, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. There's going to be satanic power given to the Antichrist to heal. You understand that? There'll be satanic power given to the Antichrist. This could mean that the apparent death of the Antichrist himself or the healing wound. And possibly he even died and it was even resurrected. It just says the wound was healed. Now the fourth verse. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. The dragon is who? Satan. Amen. Who is the beast? The Antichrist. And they worship the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And it was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. The end of the church age will be spelled with the rapture. It'll be identified and, and it'll be identified with the rapture of the church. The church will be removed from planet earth. There's so much scripture to support the rapture. I mean, I've preached on that in the past. We're not going to get into it today. But there's so much scripture to support that event. When that event happens, that which is now in the way, which is the church will be taken out of the way. Are you with me now? Say the church will be taken out of the way. And then the man of sin will be revealed. So the Antichrist will be revealed after the rapture of the church. 
Amen. John also tells us something revealed to no one else. This is important. This is the beginning of the great tribulation period. Spoke of by Daniel and also in the book of Revelation. This is also identified as the abomination of desolation. Which I'll talk about in just a minute. He speaks blasphemy against God. Let's go to the sixth verse now. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. And blasphemed his name. This is important to understand. His tabernacle. And then the dwell in heaven. You know, the first 42 months are going to be months of deception. There's going to be chaos upon the earth. And the people of the earth are going to be looking for someone that has the answers to all the problems that exist. The Antichrist, the man of sin, will be raised up. He will come on the scene. And the first 42 months, he will speak great swelling words and bring many under him to worship him. It, it'll be a total time of deception. But then the second 42 months, everything will change. Everybody says everything will change. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for the first 42 months. It is Satan's secret desire to have other creatures worship him. You remember, that's why Satan was cast out of heaven, because he wanted all of heaven to worship him. He wanted to be equal with the Most High God. And that's why God cast him out of heaven, and we'll get into that at another time. In the case of the Antichrist during the tribulation period, but such supernatural powers will be given him by the devil himself. And he will appear to have godlike characteristics and thus deceive many human beings. During this first three and a half years of the tribulation, the Antichrist will be merely a man endowed with demonic power. But during the last three and a half years, he will actually be Satan himself clothed in the Antichrist body. Let's go to the seventh verse now. This is chapter 13, verse 7. And it came and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. Now you need to confess something right here. Say, my name, my name. is written in the Lamb's book of life. You need to confess that. Boy, I, I like to hear you say it like a little bit more umph to it. Say, my name, my name is, written is written in the Lamb's book of life. <laughs> That don't bring a smile to your face. There's something wrong. I'm telling you. Hey, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. The unbelievers of the world will be deceived into believing that the beast is a god. Only those names who are written in the, in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, will refuse to worship the beast. Oh, well, why is that in Scripture, Pastor? You say the church will be removed. Yes, and there will be tribulation saints. There will be people that get saved during the tribulation. I believe that some of the greatest, uh, the greatest revivals that this earth has ever experienced will take place during the tribulation period. That's what the 144,000 is all about, guys. We're not going to teach on that today. But the 144,000 were what? Messianic Jews, saved Jews that go out to, to reach out to, the, to not only the nation of Israel, but anybody who would listen and get saved. Amen. Why do you think the two witnesses are going to be sent? And we'll teach that at a different time. That was another a major effort on the part of Father God to get people saved during the, the tribulation period. Let's talk about the power of the beast. He has given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. Today the world is prepared for a one world government philosophy. This philosophy propagated by Satan and is advocated by the intellectual, godless, atheistic leaders of the world. Governments today is readily spreading across the earth. Amen. Amen. As already seen, humankind has, been, has actually come to the conclusion that the only solution to what continuous war is one world government. And that's what we're heading for. The government will be the devil's government. Established during the tribulation, in the midst of that time, he will assume control himself. And verse 7 tells us, 
uh, to exercise power over every tribe, every people, language, and nation. Satan's authority will be all but unlimited. And almost everyone on the earth will worship him. This is not going to be a good time to be here, guys. Amen. Amen. You need to tell the people that you know, your loved ones that don't know Christ, you need to tell them about Jesus today. Amen. You need to do something today. Maybe a text message. Maybe a Facebook post. Maybe a phone call. Something. There's no time of a voice crying in the wilderness. If any man have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. The Lamb's Book of Life contains the names of all those that have called on Christ, called on Jesus for salvation. Amen. That's why I had you to confess it. I'm going to have you do it again right now. Say, my name name is written written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Let's talk about the second beast now. The second beast rises up, and this is in the 11th verse of the 13th chapter. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. The other one came out of the sea. This is coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. And exercises all the power of the first beast before him. And causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That that wound, that assassination attempt on, on, on the man of sin, that's going to be a celebrated event. That's going to be all over the news media. And either he was healed or maybe died and was resurrected. The scripture isn't clear on that. But let's say this. There was something that there was somebody tried to kill him. And he was healed. Amen. Verses 11 and 12 couples the three evil personages of the tribulation that are the opposite counterparts of the person of God. Let's look at that a little bit closer. Just as the dragon has already been anti-God. The dragon is Satan. And the first beast is what? Anti-Christ. So the second beast will be anti-spirit. Anything that has to do with Christianity, there will be an opposition. Anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-spirit. His capacity is working for the worship of the anti-Christ and will correspond with the present ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit encourages us to worship Jesus. Okay? The false prophet will encourage the people to worship the Antichrist. Are you listening carefully? The second beast is the false prophet. He will not seek to cause people to worship himself. He will not count his own personal prestige. But he will work purely for the purpose of getting others to worship the Antichrist. It's an exact parallel to the Holy Trinity. Amen. This evil scheme will be used by the devil. Remember, the devil is a counterfeiter. He's not a creator. He's a counterfeiter. Amen. This evil scheme will be used by the devil and his two cohorts to deceive people during the tribulation period. They will victimize many individuals because they have no standards, no restraints, and no principles. Amen. Look what's going on with the abortion industry now. Look what's going on. The protection of the unborn. What for selling body parts of babies? No principles. Think about this. No restraints. No standards. Kill the baby and sell his heart for $25,000. That's what that exists now. The spirit of Antichrist exists now. In verses 11 through 12, five characteristics will chart out the role of the false prophet. Are you ready? Somebody said, I'm ready. ready. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. Many Bible teachers suggest that coming up out of the earth indicates that he will not come out of the sea of peoples, 
So therefore, he may be from one nation, possibly a Jew, okay? This points out an apostate Jew, which is a possibility, although we don't know that. And it'll be during the first three and a half years. They will lead Israel to make a covenant with Antichrist and deceive them by hiding his apostasy until the middle of the tribulation period. Remember, the first three and a half years, there will be total deception. The people will say, wonderful, who can compare with the Antichrist and the false prophet? They are the solution to all the world's problems. Number two, he has two horns like a lamb. In other words, he will have a, a maybe, a, a, maybe a docile spirit, a humble spirit. He will start out that way. The Lord Jesus Christ is often referred to in the Gospels as a lamb of God. As such, he has taken away the sin of the world. Amen. The false prophet coming on earth will look like a lamb, will act like a lamb. Lambs do not have horns, which are symbols of authority. Instead, they are meek and mild animals. So he will start out as a meek and a mild person. The Lord Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing and inwardly they are ferocious wolves. The false prophet will come to Israel in sheep's clothing, but God terms him as a beast. Number three, he spoke like a dragon. This false prophet will deceive human beings in acting like a lamb, but really he will speak the words of Satan. Amen. You all told me by the raising of a hand a few minutes ago that you all have loved ones that are not saved. Guys, we have got to be able to share this as part of the gospel message. Amen. Amen. Number four, he exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf. Okay, His whole purpose was to work toward the complete dominance of the earth of the Antichrist, including a form of religion satisfactory to the Antichrist. So the false prophet, the second beast, his only goal is to promote the Antichrist and bring people into worship of him. Number five, he made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast. When indwelt by Satan in the midst of the tribulation, the Antichrist will be so deceived about himself that he will deem himself as God. He will sit in the third temple of which he will help build and erect. And he will declare that he is God and force people to worship him. What does that remind you of in the book of Daniel when Nebuchadnezzar set up that, that, huge, that huge image and, and forced people to worship him? Is an exact parallel, amen. And seek the worship of human beings. That's in 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 to 8. Now in chapter 13 of Revelation and the 13th verse. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth and the sight of men. He's going to do things that will be spectacular. Say spectacular. The false prophet will deceive unbelievers of the earth by means of wonders and miracles. Do you realize that the level of deception that this will come into the earth? Think about it. Accomplished through satanic power. Say satanic power. Remember, the church won't be here, guys. The power of the Holy Spirit working through the church, it'll have been removed. We're gone. Nothing will be holding this evil back. We are holding it back now. The church is holding this evil back. And then that which is in the way, that which hindereth, will be taken out of the way, the Scripture says. That's us. Then when we get taken out of the way, then the man of sin will be revealed. The earth, imagine the earth existing without the church. I'm not talking about an organization. I'm talking about the real true living organism of the Holy Spirit. That can be in any church. Doesn't matter what signs out front. God doesn't look at signs. He looks at hearts. Amen. He looks at hearts. The false prophet will cause an image. This is really important. Let's go back and read a couple verses here. 14 and 15, as long as we have some time. And disease them that dwell on the earth by those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and now lives. 
Once again, it's going to be a celebrated event that that wound in the head of the, of the beast was healed. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And the image of the beast should both speak and think of that. He's going to put up an image and give it power to speak. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast, they should be killed if they don't worship. The false prophet will cause an image of the Antichrist to be built and have the power to speak. Where are you getting this, Pastor? Right out of the book of Revelations. Have you ever read it? Have you read the book of Revelations? You know, most Christians avoid that book. They don't want to read it. We need to read and understand this prophecy. It's important to God that we understand it. It's important to Jesus that we understand it. So much so that he offers a special blessing if you do. Amen. Somebody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. He will issue an order that all who do not worship the beast or the Antichrist will be killed. Revelations 20 and 4 tells us that many will be slain by the removing of the head. Everything the false prophet does is calculated to increase the power and the authority of the Antichrist. So the false prophet, this cohort, is there only to empower the Antichrist. This is not surprising as he receives his own power and authority from the Antichrist. Let's go to the 16th verse now in this same chapter. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their, or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This is the mark of the beast. One of the most celebrated teachings in the Bible. And the least understood. One of the most quoted and least understood of all end time prophecies. It literally means, the word mark in the Greek literally means graven. It's actually graven. The custom of the Hebrews when they took a slave for life was to mark them by driving it all through the year. That was a mark. In John's day, slaves were branded by their owners in a similar fashion. Without a mark, a person was unable to engage in routine commerce. Think about this. No longer be able to buy and sell. It does not say that you cannot live. It says that you cannot buy or sell. Do not take this mark. And I know you won't be here, but you may have loved ones that possibly could be here. That's why it's so important to tell them, and it's so important to tell them about this, this mark. I mean, it's so crucial that they make the rapture. Amen. To accept the mark of the beast, one will knowingly agree to renounce God and to accept the mark. Without the mark, no one will be able to buy or sell, will fear they and or their enemy possibly could die. But to accept the mark means eternal death. Say eternal death. If anyone worships the beast at his image and receives a mark on his forehead or upon his hand, he will also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. It tells us in Revelations 14, 10. Here is wisdom. Let he that hath understanding count the number of his name, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Six, six, six. That number is probably more known and, and more studied than any other number in, in the history of mankind. Go home and Google 666. You will get billions of responses on Google. Billions. People know more about 666 than they, than they do John 316. And that's the truth, isn't it? Amen. Are you guys with me this morning? Pastor, this is a little bit heavy. I know it is. I'm almost through. But you've got to hear it. Amen. And Lord, forgive me if I didn't preach this sermon. God, forgive me if I didn't tell you about the mark of the beast. Because I'm going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of what I told you. Like that song that we sang earlier. I love that song. 
you know, when we get up there, they're going to say, what did you do down there? I love that song. It was just so awesome. I like it because I'm, I'm into music and I enjoy it. I always wanted to be in a band and all that. You know, that's why I, I relate to the lyric of the song. But it has a deep meaning. Amen. Somebody said amen. amen. I personally believe that when the time comes, the tribulation saint that is involved, those with discernment of the word will know exactly what 666 means. We do not know what that number means now. There is no revelation in Scripture other than it is the number of a man. And that's all that it says. Amen. We do know that to accept the mark is to accept Antichrist as God and thus deny God. Only those who walk with Christ will be able to understand why the taking of this mark cannot be done even if it means death to their physical body. Amen. Now I'm going to bring a summary now to this message. I'm going to pull this together quickly. Okay? A whole teaching together just for easy understanding. Number one, Antichrist not only means against Christ, but it means instead of Christ. This man will be an imposter. He will be a pretender. And his number is 666, the number of a man. He will convince people during the first 42 months that he is Christ. Number two, the timing of Antichrist is not totally clear in Scripture, but it appears that he will not be revealed until after the rapture of the church. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or all that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And now ye know that what withholds that he might be revealed in his time. In other words, it was the church that was holding him back. When the church is removed, then the man of sin will be revealed. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Can you agree with that? It already is at work now. Amen. Amen. And until it be taken out of the way, then shall that wicked one be revealed. Amen. So when the church is removed, the man of sin will be revealed. Amen. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Yes, there will be satanic power expressed through the beast and the false prophet. Read 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. I would highly recommend that you read that chapter and study it. That's the prophecy of the Apostle Paul on this subject. Number three. From what we can see in Scripture, the saved will never see the Antichrist, as the Antichrist will appear on the scene after the rapture of the church. Number four, he is coming to deify Satan. He is coming to lift up Satan to make Satan look like God. Revelation 13, 4 speaks of worshiping the dragon, Satan, who gives power to the beast, who is the Antichrist. This implies Satan worship will be running rampant here on earth. Say Satan worship. Satan worship. Number five, he is coming to deify and take the place of Jesus. Remember, he is not a creator. He is what? He is a counterfeiter. Number six, his time and reign will be limited. 42 months of peaceful deception and then 42 months of demonic demonstration. Number seven, he is coming to kill Christians. He's coming to kill Christians. Amen. Revelation 13, 7 says that. Number eight, there will be an assassination attempt against him, but he will be healed and resurrected by satanic power. This will cause many to worship him and the devil who gives him power. Number nine, he will have a partner, the false prophet. 13, that's Revelation 13, 11. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like those of a lamb, and he spoke like the voice of a dragon. Now, I've already described the false prophet to you. Number 10, the false prophet will implement the mark of the beast. Number 11, he will introduce a cashless society. And we're heading for that now, aren't we? No one will be able to buy or sell or engage in any kind of commerce unless they take the mark. Number 12, the technology already exists to accommodate such a brand or a mark in our bodies. 
We know that already exists today. Number 13, imagine the Bible predicted this type of technology 2,000 years ago. John experienced the unveiling of the eternal. This is important, important to understand. He, he experienced the unveiling of the eternal on that little desert island 2,000 years ago. No computers, no tablets, no smartphones. That's why you can believe the Bible. Amen. It's the one book that dares to predict the future hundreds of times with 100% accuracy. Amen. Number 14, Revelation 13, 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Amen. And we already shared that scripture with you. Number 15, this is important to understand. No one will take the mark accidentally. Somebody called me not too long ago and wanted to know if this vaccine was the mark of the beast. And I could not see in scripture that that was the, the mark of the beast. Because you are making a choice to do it. Amen? That's a personal choice between you and uh, your doctor, between you and your God. That's a personal thing. Say it's personal. Somebody asked me that publicly one time. I said, that's a personal question. Amen. But I believe with all my heart, I can't see anywhere in Scripture that would allow us taking the mark accidentally. It will not be done accidentally. Amen. No one will take the mark accidentally. It is a pledge of allegiance to the Antichrist. Somebody said amen. amen. The mark of the beast is future, not present or not past. The mark is a visible brand of sorts. The mark is given as a sign of devotion to the Antichrist. The mark will be a passport for commerce. The mark cannot be taken by accident. You will know when you are taking it. It will be a decision that you're making to deny Christ and worship the Antichrist. Even an angel will fly through the heavens, it tells us in Scripture, warning everyone during the tribulation period, don't take the mark, don't take the mark. God will even send angels flying through the sky to tell you not to do it. That's for the Christians that are here during the tribulation period. Number 22, the mark will be good for a time of the great tribulation. Number 23, during that time, there will be global economy. During that time, there will be one world government ruled by one man. And here is a very important reminder as I wrap up here today. In Isaiah 46, 9 to 11, remember the things that I've done in the past, for I alone am God. I am God and there is none like me. Say none like me. Only I can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan will come to pass. For I do whatever I wish. I will call a swift bird to pray from the east. A leader from a distant land to come and do my bidding. I have said what I would do and I will do it. Amen. That's just a reminder that we're dealing with God here. Amen. Not another man, not an antichrist, not a false prophet. No, we're talking about Jehovah God. Amen. Father El Shaddai, Adonai God, the creator of the universe. Amen. Hallelujah. Why would anyone take the mark of the beast? It tells us in 2 Thessalonians 2, this man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power, signs, and miracles. He will use every kind of evil, deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would have saved them. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe a lie. Where did the lie start from? What is the lie that's being talked about in Scripture? It goes back to the Garden of Eden. It goes back to the Garden of Eden. And the lie was, don't believe the word of God. That's what the lie was. That's what the lie was. The devil came to Adam and Eve and said, hath God said, hath God promised, that won't happen. Don't believe the word of God. How many here have struggled with their faith in the word of God? Amen. How many here have struggled or know somebody that has struggled with their faith in the Word of God? That's where the lie starts when the devil said, don't believe the Word of God. 
The Antichrist will rebuild the temple. Ezekiel's prophecy of the third temple will be fulfilled. The abomination of desolation. He will place an image in the temple and bring it to life. And, and the image will speak. Commanding worship. Very similar to the story in the book of Daniel. And this is what I would like to share as a glorious closing to a very heavy message today. I have taught you in a brief way in about maybe what 30 or 40 minutes about the mark of the beast there is a glorious story that follows in the 14th chapter and I'm excited to share that because I wanted to lighten the air a little bit before we end a glorious closing to this teaching is in Revelations 14 starting at verse 1 then I saw the lamb who is the Lamb? Jesus. Standing on Mount Zion. Where is Mount Zion? It's the church. It's us. Amen. And with him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written in their foreheads. They took a mark too, didn't they? A totally different kind of mark. That's why we are here now. We have loved ones here now. If we can help our loved ones that are lost now to be saved and come to Christ before the rapture of the church, they won't have any of this to deal with during that seven-year period. Oh, yes, I've heard you say, well, there'll be a second chance. Yes, there will. That is true. But would you wish living through the tribulation period on your loved ones? Would you not tell them? Because you're afraid of offending them? Guys, I feel like a voice crying in the wilderness. And I hope this message gets listened to by thousands of people. That somebody will be stirred to do something today. This week, get it on your to-do list this week. Don't worry about offending them. They're going to get offended in every little thing. They'll turn on the news and get offended. You've got the most important message in the history of mankind to make sure that they know about it. Somebody said amen. Amen. I saw the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like a roar of a mighty ocean, waves, or the rolling of loud thunder. And it was like the sound of many harpists playing together. This great choir sang a wonderful new song in front of the throne of God and before the four living beings and the 24 elders of which I showed you an artist's conception here this morning. No one could learn this song except the 144,000 that had been redeemed from the earth. They have kept themselves pure as virgins, followed the Lamb wherever He goes. They have been purchased from among people on the earth as a special offering to God and to the Lamb they have told no lies, and they are without blame. They are a people that God chose to set aside and say, these are worthy to do this evangelistic work during the tribulation period. The four principles of the 144,000, they will carry the mark of the Father. They will sing a new song. They are sincere in their faith. No double standards, no hypocrisy, and they follow the Lamb of God. That's called holy living. Oh, that sounds religious to me, Pastor. No, it isn't. Remember, you're saved and your righteousness is on you because Christ died on the cross. He declared you righteous before God. 
by what he did on the cross. So therefore you are saved apart from yourself. Apart from anything you can do. Apart from anything that you can say. You are saved by a divine grace of God. But holy living is part of the sanctification process. Do you realize how many people get saved and never go on to live for Christ? They leave the stadium where they raise their right hand in front of Billy Graham, that precious man of God. And he often talked about this. That they leave the stadium and never once again darken the doorway of a church. No care about the things of God, let alone holy living and living a righteous life. A life that is set apart for service and set apart for righteousness and worship. This is not to be taken lightly. Oh, pastor, doesn't grace, the grace of God covers all that. Thank God it does. But are you going to take advantage of the grace of God? Remember the Apostle Paul said, Shall we then just go on sinning because of this great grace? God forbid. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And the very last characteristic was that they follow the Lamb of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is touching our hearts here this morning. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, touch us, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My God, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for the word this morning. I thank you, Lord, how you have made this real. This text, Father, in Revelations 13 has come alive, O oh God, so that we can understand what it means when we say the mark of the beast. Lord, we know, Father, that we are preserved, O oh God, and we are saved by the grace of God. Everybody say the grace of God. Hallelujah. Which is God's riches. Say it after me. God's riches. At Christ's expense. Amen. Say it after me again. Say God's riches. At Christ's expense. Amen. So Lord we know that we are saved by the grace of God. And the church will be removed. But then after that. The man of sin will be revealed. And his cohort. The false prophet. Lord in the name of Jesus. Lord protect us oh God. Protect our families oh God. Those among our loved ones oh God. That we know that have not accepted Christ. That are fighting the word of God. Fighting an acceptance of Christ. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, may we see that this battle belongs to you. Lord, may we but present whatever we can in our own feeble way, whatever way we can. But then know that this battle belongs to you. That you will change the heart. That you will reveal yourself, oh God, and, and bring them to Christ, Father, in a way that we couldn't even begin to do it. But Lord, I know that you will use us. You will use us, O oh God. You use our tongue. You use our heart. You use our feet to go. You use our hands to lay hands on the sick. Lord, you use us, O oh God. So, Lord, we know that we commission with you. But, Lord, we're putting our trust in you for the salvation of our loved ones this morning. Because we know this battle belongs to Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord in this place. Lord, I pray that you will bless this congregation, Father, who has hung in here today and listened to this message. I know it was a difficult time. Lord, we know, Father, this is a, a complex part of the Word of God. And Lord, we look to you, God, for wisdom in teaching it, O oh God. Lord, we know that the Holy Spirit is my paraclete, is the one called alongside to help. I cannot do this without you. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus as we continue, Father, over the next few weeks, O oh God, to look into these end times prophecies that everyone will be a super blessing. And every time these go out on social media, O oh God, on YouTube, O oh God, or posted on Facebook, Lord, may, Father, the right people listen and, Father, get saved and brought to Christ in a very, very special way. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus and everybody at the house of praise said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you and go with you. Amen. Amen. Amen.